Okay, here's another one with something hot and something cold having a fight. Let's see what we can do with this. We have 100 grams of cold water and 50 grams of hot water. And we stir those together. What happens? Well, if we have water at 10 degrees and water at 90 degrees, the 90 degree water is going to cool down, the 10 degree water is going to heat up, and they're going to meet at some in-between temperature T. It'll be in the 50s or 40s, or we'll, we'll know in a moment. So for the hot water, we can say it's going to lose a certain amount of energy that we can get, find with MC delta T. The mass of the hot water is 50 grams. The specific heat for water is 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the temperature change is, well, it's starting at 90 and it's dropping down to T. And then for the cold water, it's going to absorb energy. And that energy is MC delta T also. The mass of the cold water is 100 grams. Its specific heat is 4.19, and its temperature change, it's starting at 10 and going up to T, so T minus 10 should do it for the temperature change. Uh, again, the reason I went the reason I put T second here and T first here is because T is somewhere between these two numbers. I want both of these temperature changes to come out positive. In other words, I am not following what they say here with T final minus T initial. What I'm using is T high minus T low. That does a nicer job of solving problems like this. Generally, T final minus T initial is great for deltas. It's what we almost always want, just not with this formula, not when you're doing heat lost equals heat gained. You want both of these to come out positive or weird things can happen. So. The energy lost by the hot water here is the exact same energy that's being gained by the cold water, therefore they must be equal. And so we can write an equation that ties these together, which will say the energy lost by the hot water equals the energy gained by the cold water. Nine, and then we have t minus 10. Okay, and we must solve this for t. The standard approach would be multiply 50 by 4.19 and then distribute that through the brackets, but notice that these 4.19s are identical. That's too good to pass up. Those can just be canceled. What we're doing here is we're dividing both sides by 4.19, so both of these vanish. And now we have a much nicer formula or equation. We have 50 times 90 minus t equals 100 times t minus 10. If you want to see, by the way, how this looks, if you don't take out the 4.19, get a hold of the instructor and they'll, I was going to say they'll be happy to show you, but they'll, they'll, sh they'll show you. They won't be thrilled to do it because it's a bit of a messy equation, but I'm sure if you need that to nail this idea down, they will be there for you. This 50 distributes through those brackets. 4,500 minus 50t. This 100 distributes through these brackets. And we get 100t minus 1,000. Uh, this 50 will go over there, so we'll, it goes positive. We get 150t. This negative 1,000 goes over here and becomes positive, so we get 5,500. And to finish this, we divide both sides by 150. because on the right, those 150s cancel and we're left with just plain old t, which is what we want. And on the left, we get 5,500 divided by 150 equals, and that comes out to 36.6666666 degrees. Now, these temperatures only had three significant digits their difference would only have three significant digits. I believe we can only give this to three significant digits, and so our final temperature, we would have to say, is 
36.06. We're keeping three digits. We look at the one just to the right of that and say, if you're five or more, I'll round up. Well, it is five or more. So we round up to 36.7, and that is the equilibrium temperature.